great to come to New York and talk to such a small crowd of people. Um, I'm glad to be in this show, Global Feminism, because I didn't actually know how to spell feminism before this show, so it tells you a little bit something about me. I've walked um, or travelled through life as an Indigenous Australian. I'm actually from the Butchula people and come from the Wandana clan from an island called Fraser Island. So my take on Australia is a little bit different from the dominant culture. And this ad appeared and I thought it would be um, in the Australian newspaper and I thought it would be nice to sort of talk a little bit about um, history from an Indigenous perspective. The English came, unfortunately they never left. And this is our Prime Minister John Howard and in Australia there have been huge discussions in relation to Aboriginal communities, Aboriginal populations because they tend to see it as a little bit problematic and a lot of the social issues that keep coming up. Um, so my work really talks more about race than it does about gender and I had an opportunity to live here in New York in 2004 and one of the first shows I went along to see was this exhibition curated at the International Photography Centre and it was called Only Skin Deep and the image on the right um, led me into a, a new body of work that I created here in 2004 and one of those images is currently in the exhibition. What struck me with the image on the right really was that this was a woman behind this mask and it said to me that not only men were involved in this um, you know, racist um, construct but also women were equally involved and it meant that children were indoctrinated to think a certain way as well. And this is a documentary, it was a three part series that was shown in Australia but it really talked about the science of how race is constructed which fascinated me. In Australia we had um, a lot of um, measuring of Aboriginal skulls to prove that we were a part of the missing link and um, incorporated into Darwin's ev evolutionary theory but we never did prove them right. And so from that image that you just saw of that woman in the KKK hood I started to do a body of work that for me wanted to play in a humorous way and sort of subvert um, dominant ways of thinking or a dominant construct that most Americans are pretty familiar with and it wasn't too difficult to play with some of that imagery so I started visualising the work and then I set about um, incorporating people into the, into, the, into the project so I had to find African American models who wanted to be a part of the project, a seamstress, a photographer. And um, the work came about over a four month period. It was shown here at the um, ISCP, I think it's called, and then it was shown in Australia in 2005. So it's sort of done a round circle. It's nice to come back to the States this year and have one of those images here in the show. When I was here um, researching for the project, it was very easy to look up online KKK, except these guys that I've uh, done or made are called the Head Mystic Honky Haters, so they're just abbreviated to the HHH. And the hoods and the fabric, all of the material comes from Harlem. This is the image that's in the show. Some of the people are male, some of the people are female. So I won't, probably won't talk too long in relation to the work. Um, my talk's going to be really brief, actually. And when I went back to Australia, the image on the right, the, what's interesting is that this imagery still sort of circulates in different forms. So the imagery on the right was on the front of a newspaper. And it's actually the Australian Army dressed up, as you can see here, in pillowcases. So it does have a resonance um, in Australia. And what I want to say about Australia, which people may not have an understanding of, is that it is still actually a very racist country. And so when I did show the work in Australia, people were confronted in different ways, whether they were Aboriginal friends or uh, people of colour, so the humour in the work. But 
Anglo-Australians or white Australians were very confronted by their own uh, feelings of guilt and racism. And the work really is about playing with your emotions. So it does take you on a little bit of a head spin because you're trying to work out where is it based, how is it grounded. And the image on the left um, really came from the research that I was doing here. And all I had to t you know, tap into a Google search was K uh, KKK. And that was one of the images that re easily came up. And so for me, when I showed the first image of the group, this is, it resonated in that way, like these seven people standing. And showing the work here in the States um, was, had a good feeling in a way because it was a way for me to engage with a community of people or people from a community who I may not have ever got to meet. So when I do travel overseas and do make a body of work, I try and make a point of meeting people from that country and working with them. So um, in 2001, I had a residency in uh, Tampa, Florida, and I got to meet Seminole people. So I do try to go out as an artist and work with it, work in different types of communities. So I might just leave it there. Thanks. Oh, okay, let's do some questions. Yeah, okay. yeah, let's do so that. If you could just restate the question into the light, that would be great. Okay, okay. any questions? Does anyone have any questions for Fiona? Yeah. What is the, the newspaper uh, of, of with these guys in the um, pillowcases? What's that about? Oh, the pillowcases? Yeah. That was just um, the, those. Well, obviously they were fooling around. There were pillowcases on their head. What was important is that they came from, they were um, soldiers who worked for the Australian Army based in Townsville. And they thought for their Christmas um, sort of get together that they would dress up in that way. And that's why the costumes had that red with it. So they're dressed up as Santa Clauses, supposedly with these hoods on. Um, well, you know, the way that I've been raised in Australia as, is as an Indigenous person, so my take on life is very different from an Anglo-Saxon Australian. So, um, you know, my take on race is different, so I'm t coming from it from a different perspective. So when I do work overseas or in Australia, some of the work is more based with race politics than gender politics. Yeah. Southern soldiers from the states had a problem with sort of the way that blacks were being treated in Australia because they had a lot more freedom and so forth. Do you know anything about that? Um, black soldiers coming to Australia from America were treated like um, second class citizens. They weren't allowed to um, mix with the white soldiers, as far as I'm aware, in some documentaries I've seen. So they were um, not allowed to go out and on leave as the white soldiers. And I probably think that there was a, a fear that, you know, uh, black soldiers would go out with white Australian girls. So it was sort of like to curtail any of that. 